Hello everyone, so in this video we're going to be looking at uh, region descriptors. So until now in uh, most videos we've been foc focusing on uh, treating pixels as isolated points uh, and the filters that we've done um, we're looking at either very uh, small neighborhoods for the, for the um, kernel convolution for instance or we're filtering uh, pixels based only on their own value. Um, but there are many cases where we uh, want not just to look at uh, one isolated pixel or one very small region, but when we want to look at uh, properties of larger regions uh, around the pixel, when we want to characterize, for instance, uh, the uh, texture, um, to, to be able to have more context on the pixel to, de to determine uh, what type of object, for instance, uh, it's uh, part of. Um, so one thing that uh, that that uh, is very uh, that's done fairly often in image processing is to compute uh, region descriptors, so to take large regions of the image centered around uh, a pixel, or just taking the image and cutting it into a grid, for instance, and computing some statistics, some uh, information about the region that we can then use for uh, trying to uh, exploit that uh, information. So let's uh, have a look uh, at what we can do here. And what I've taken here is uh, an image um, that is an RGB image of uh, a desert uh, landscape. Um, and the idea here would be to try to, uh, to find a way to separate the, uh, for instance, the, the sky from the, uh, the desert and the mountains here based on some region uh, texture, some regional uh, descriptors that we uh, that we could find. So, first thing that I'm going to do here is take a look at what it means uh, to, to 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 compute a region descriptor. So, let's take any position in the image. For instance, here I've taken uh, x 200 and y 300, so that would bring me somewhere around here. And I can define a region as something uh, of with a certain size. So here in this case, I put 100 by 100 pixel, and the region will be all the pixels that are in a square of 100 by 100, with the top corner in um, x200, y300. And I can take that region, uh, extract it from the image, and just uh, here uh, display it. Uh, and so if we look at the region, we'll see um, more closely, of course, those pixels. You will also see that there is uh, um, a certain uh, weird square pattern that, uh, that appears here. This is a very common uh, artifact from uh, JPEG compressing. So usually when you zoom in an image and you see this kind of, uh, of square uh, artifacts, uh, it's typically uh, done, uh, typically because of, uh, of compression and that's something that you will mostly see uh, in, uh, in JPEG. Um, you will also usually with JPEG see lots of, uh, of such artifacts uh, around uh, any uh, text that's written on it because JPEG is very bad at uh, uh, rendering uh, text, but that's another topic entirely. Um, so what can we do with that? Well, we could try to find what would, uh, what kind of, uh, of information you can extract from that region to characterize um, the, the texture that's, that's in it. So one thing we could do, for instance, is uh, use a filter that we have seen before, the Sobel filter. So the Sobel filter will uh, give us information about the, um, the borders that are present in the, in the region. And we could say that we, we will compute the borders in the red, green, and blue channels to um, to, to get so the, the, the kind of the, the amount of borders that are present in the region. And if we sum, uh, so if we, if, we, uh, if we just do the Sobel, we'll have for each pixel uh, information about the strength of the border in that particular pixel. And if we sum over the entire uh, region, we will get uh, an, an idea of uh, how much borders there are, how many borders there are in the, in the region on all three uh, channels. And so in this, in this way, we summarize all the information that's contained this, this, uh, in this uh, 100 by 100 RGB uh, region into just a vector with uh, three values uh, representing so the borders in RG and B. Um, so this is just taking uh, one region. Now um, what's interesting is when we start looking at 
all the regions that are present uh, in the image. And so what basic seek one basic thing, sorry, that you can do to, 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 to start looking at that is to just cut the image into a regular grid and compute the descriptors for each uh, cell of that grid. So let's say that we want to, uh, to put uh, 10 cells uh, in the vertical axis and 15 cells in the uh, horizontal axis. So we just want to cut the image in 10 here and in 15 in that direction. Uh, and what I'm doing here is uh, just computing the, the size that those um, that those uh, cells will have to be. So uh, here, here it comes out to 80 by 80 pixels uh, cells. And I will have 10 times 15 uh, cells in the, in the image. And now what I can do is create a new array that will contain my descriptors. It will have uh, as a shape the number of cells in both dimensions and three because my my I have three uh, descriptors for, for, for that region. Um, and then I can just go through every um, every cell in my grid and take the region. So we can compute the coordinates of the, the region, uh, which will be just uh, y times the size until y plus 1 times the size and the same in the, in the x dimension. And I put in my array here uh, for the descriptor uh, the descriptor computed for that region. So here I have chosen um, to, 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 to create a kind of uh, fake descriptors with only three uh, values because the advantage of using three values is that afterwards you can um, uh, display that, um, that, uh, those, de those descriptors um, as, a, as, as an uh, image. So if I uh, look at um, my, my descriptors uh, array here, I have an array that has uh, three channels. And so that means that I can kind of display it like an RGB uh, image to have a look at, at what those features, um, uh, at the difference between, uh, between the features of, of each cell. Of course, in reality, you're not constrained by, uh, by, 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 by this. You can um, use as many features as you need for uh, whatever uh, task you, you need to, 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 to do afterwards. And typically, you will have uh, many more uh, features uh, computed in 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 a, in a region, but so here I can um, create a figure, and if I try just to uh, show the descriptors um, like that, I'm going to um, to run into a problem because I have here uh, descriptors which are uh, f uh, floats, and Matplotlib uh, when when you are giving it an RGB image with floats, it wants everything to be. Uh, constraint between 0 and 1. So what I can do is uh, normalize um, by uh, the uh, maximum and I can uh, also go one step uh, further and um, use the, uh, the maximum in, in every uh, so separately for, for every uh, feature. So here it would be by the, by the global maximum. So I would take the, just the maximum value in any of the, ch of the channels uh, to, to, to divide everything, by, um, to get everything between 0 and 1. Uh, but that might bring some imbalance between the, um, the, the, the features. So it's a bit cleaner to here uh, set uh, the axis uh, 0, 1. So that uh, I get, so just to, to, to show what that is. So that I get the maximum value here in uh, in each channel. So in the, the red goes to 994, 982, and 802. And so this is what I use as a divider for, for each uh, of the cells. So that's in each uh, feature, it goes between uh, 0 and 1. Um, and so this is my um, image representing the, uh, the features that I, uh, that I have computed. And here it's interesting because just by looking at this, we can see that um, we have some difference, uh, some fairly um, large difference between the, um, the, the, the information that you've computed in the uh, region that are part of the, uh, of more the, the, the desert and the ground than uh, what we have in the uh, sky. So this is an indication. So of course, in this case, it's a fairly uh, easy, uh, easy image, but this is an indicator that uh, the, um, the features that we've chosen um, seem to, uh, to match the task that we are trying to achieve. Uh, if at this point we realize that uh, it, was com it looked completely random uh, in here uh, and that we, we didn't have uh, 
uh, we clearly cou couldn't uh, differentiate between the, the two classes of, uh, of uh, regions that we are trying to, to, to separate, then it would uh, mean that uh, we have to, to find other uh, descriptors um, for our problem. Uh, to see things a bit better, we can also, um, so here I, I can normalize the descriptor, but we can also uh, put the, so overlay the, um, this uh, distance map on the uh, original image to kind of uh, see where the, the, the borders uh, of the different regions uh, fall. And so we can see that we, we do seem to be following uh, somehow the, uh, the shape of the, of the ground with the, with the regions that we have. Um, so and this is just done by uh, resizing this uh, end descriptors. So this uh, this descriptors image, I'm just resizing it to the uh, original shape using order of zero so that it doesn't try to uh, interpolate, um, and then I display it uh, with uh, an opacity of 0 0.5 to to see the image below. Um, so what can we do with that now? Well. We can try now to, to, to use this information to do some, um, some segmentation. What I'm going to do here is take uh, a reference region, and the reference that I will take will be uh, the, the, the region here, 9, 7. So this is, I think, uh, this one or this one. So one at the bottom uh, somewhere in the, uh, in the ground. And what we can do is compute now the distance uh, f f in, in feature space, so um, for, for from this uh, cell to every other cell in the image. So if I um, take here the, um, the operation and descriptors minus uh, reference, it will take, it will do the operation for every uh, cell in the in the image. It will uh, take the, um, the 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 three uh, features, subtract them element by element to the three uh, features of my reference here. So I will reference just to show so the reference this is the the three features from uh, this uh, probably one of these ones um, and um, and so I, I can um, so yeah, sub subtract um, square and uh, sum along the uh, uh, the axis of the features and so this will do it for uh, every uh, cell of the uh, of the image I will get the Euclidean distance um, between the uh, features the different feature vectors um, and I can uh, once I've computed this uh, distance map I can also display it as uh, as an image and I will see that I have as expected uh, lower lower distances uh, in for, for all the regions that are also part of the ground and higher distances for all the regions that are part of the uh, sky. So I can now take uh, in the same uh, in the same way as, as before I can uh, resize this uh, distance map uh, to the original size of the image and display it uh, overlaid on the original image just to check that it seems to uh, to make sense and uh, that it might be uh, useful. Um, and now if I want to, um, to do some segmentation with that, well, one thing that I could do is use uh, some simple thresholding, for instance, using Otsu, to find within the distance map uh, what is the best uh, threshold to, uh, to split this, um, this distance map in two different uh, classes. And so I will compute the threshold using Otsu, use that uh, to create a mask and uh, display the mask here, and I get uh, something like that. that once again, I can um, uh, overlay on the original image to get something that is uh, relatively good for such a, a, a simple algorithm. If I want to have a border that um, is uh, slightly, um, slightly better than, uh, than that, um, I could uh, try to uh, interpolate a bit when I upscale my, uh, my distance map. Um, and so that uh, would mean that, uh, for instance, here, instead of uh, doing uh, an, an order uh, of zero for the, for, the, for the resizing, I could uh, do some interpolation. So here it will be some linear interpolation, for instance, uh, between uh, the, um, in between the, the, the cells. Um, and that way I get more of a, of a gradient between the, the, the cells rather than uh, just the uh, harsh, uh, the harsh bo uh, border that I had before. Uh, and as you can see, there is a, a, um, a border effect that's in action uh, here. That's because the, the default behavior for, um, 
for, for, for the resize uh, method here in scikit image uh, until the latest versions. I, I think they already changed it in the latest version, but I might not have it uh, here. Uh, is to uh, consider that uh, at the border they are also looking outside of the image, and outside of the image they just fill it with a constant value of zero, and so you get this effect where it goes. Uh, uh, kind of fades away to the border. You can change that by using, for instance, the uh, mode uh, reflects, where here it's um, it behaves as if there was a, a mirror on the borders, and uh, and the, the the pixel values were just reflected on the other side of the uh, border. Uh, I can increase the uh, order of the interpolation, so the um, the order two does not work in scikit image at least in this version, but order three, so this will be a uh, bicubic uh, interpolation. Um, and I will get some models which are even more, um, uh, even smoother um, than, uh, than what I had uh, before. And I can do the same, um, afterward, the same uh, thresholding, uh, again using Otsu. And I will get now a border that will be uh, a lot uh, nicer that I can also uh, put on, uh, overlay here. So I can see that here, with this particular um, uh, thresholding, I get a border that looks nicer, but that uh, kind of underestimates the uh, ground. So I could, uh, of course, uh, try to adjust the threshold to find something uh, 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 other than Otsu and to find something that, that uh, sticks a bit, a bit better. But this uh, is starting to, to get uh, uh, a bit nitpicky. Um, I can try to look at what's happening if I just use border one, the same thing. So basically, uh, the, the, the threshold here, the Otsu does not seem to be uh, exactly the best uh, threshold, but it's still already a, a relatively good uh, result for, um, for such a, a, a simple um, algorithm. So that's the basic idea of using region descriptors. Of course, this uh, will be something that, depending on, on the task, um, will require to find uh, well good descriptors that are adapted to the type of image that we are looking at and to the task that we are trying to, uh, to accomplish. Um, so that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.